This tomato, this barking tomato, is ready for picking in the new year and with a glammed up version of my usual homemade but saucy rendition of all things edible. In three, two, one, action. I'm starting 2016 with a video helping of one of my biggest foodie inspirations, Michael Buckley, at his latest incarnation, Buckley Bakery and Cafe in Merrimack. Way back in 1995, when the term gourmet was rarely, if ever, associated with the likes of Southern New Hampshire, Chef Michael took an enormous risk by investing his money, heart, and soul in a high-end restaurant concept in blue-collar downtown Nashua. Like so much about Chef Michael's culinary intuition, he was spot on. The restaurant bearing his name proved more than an overnight sensation. It started a culinary revolution in the Gate City, where at one time, 03060 had more fine restaurants than just about any city of its size in New England. I met with Chef Michael recently to talk about his steady ascent towards Epicurean Nirvana and what he's learned along the way. Happy New Year. You too. I had the pleasure of starting my new year right here at the bakery. It was my first time and uh, a very delicious time, I might add. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And obviously, for those who know you, know that you put so much love into all your projects. Just a little quick summation here. Michael Timothy's, now MT's, in Nashua, 1995. I think one of the first uh, restaurants in Greater Nashua ever to have a rating with Spectators uh, magazine for your love and adoration of wine and food. Surf the restaurant 2002, Buckley Steakhouse here in Merrimack 2005. You moved to Portsmouth with Surf in 2011 and now a bakery. So does this sort of like uh, fulfill the whole facet of uh, the food uh, chain for you and and why why here why now well okay number one i never say never so i don't know if this is it um i love what i do but i also am always moving in my head and always thinking of new ideas and if i feel strongly enough about something i'm going to do it and um i always try to move carefully make sure i have the right crews in place so i'm not jeopardizing what i'm doing and i keep close tabs with my management team and I try to move very carefully and smartly so I'm not saying I wouldn't ever do anything I I have a lot of concepts I would still love to do but I'm also at some point going to want to slow down a little bit so I haven't I have to find that balance so I don't I don't know that but as far as the um, the bakery is concerned you know we've been here like you said since 2005 so we've been here 10 years now at uh, across the way at Buckley's Steakhouse and we had some great neighbors for a number of years being Swan Chocolates. But the property was up for sale. And at first I wasn't going to go after it because I had already uh, done a real estate purchase last year and I was, didn't want to extend myself too far. But then as the more they showed it, the more I started getting nervous. What if somebody takes it that it doesn't jive with what we do and there's parking wars and everything else. I, I just felt, all right, it might be safest to try to get this property because I've always wanted to do a, uh, a kind of communal um, bake shop for the restaurants. Right? I always had bakers and pastry chefs at all the different restaurants working independently. And it's very hard to be efficient when you're one person in, in one spot. And I've always wanted to put them under one roof and let them work as a team. And I kind of, I'll be honest with you, I always saw that happening in downtown Nashua someday, but when this became available and I said, what, am I, what, what could I do with this spot? We're a real bakery, but kind of mixed with a little bit of a Panera. Uh -huh. and maybe even a little bit more than that because we take it a step further. We do do the soups, they do soups. But we do entrees, and like I said, we do, we're doing sushi now. So when you come in, I think a lot of the, the comment I hear the most is, wow, I didn't know you had all this stuff. Meaning they didn't expect anything but baked goods. So our juices, we have uh, a number of them. We have the uh, orange carrot. Like I said, they all have a little bit of ginger, so they have a little zip. They all have a little bit of uh, lemon juice, but you know, we have, we have them all labeled, tells you what's in them. Celery, cucumber, kale, apple. 
Uh, we do all press our own apple cider too. I bought a cider press. Cool. So we're doing our own cider, at least to, while the apples are still good. Mm -hmm. I've been going over to uh, Brookdale and buying them right out of their warehouse out back. Oh, nice. Yep, and then we I press usually a couple bushel at a time. I get about 50 bottles of uh, cider out of each one. But when you come in, in the morning you have all these pastries set up, ready to go, mm -hmm. you know, every day. Six o'clock, all this stuff's ready to go. So you're open six to six? Six to six. So my bakers actually, they were starting at midnight, but now they start at 10 at night. So I have one that starts at 10, I have one that starts at midnight. Wow. For all the, you know, bread baking and then pastry, stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. then the, and then the pastry chefs usually get here around four and five in the morning and start doing the sweet, the sweet stuff for the case. But as you can see, it's not, it's not just a bread and cake bakery. Although we do have fresh breads that we feature, we do have the breakfast pastries. We talked about the salads. We have a Greek salad. Oh, I see the sushi now. Yeah. Yep. And I always said, why, you know, myself and two of my chefs that work here with me all worked uh, at the sushi bar. Yep, that um, makes sense. Chef Justin Leonese, who is uh, in there right now. So you just have to buy these containers and bring it here, right? Well, we all worked. We all worked at the at the at the sushi bars at both in both Nashua and and Portsmouth. So mm -hmm. we have really got our technique down. So why not do some here? And guess what? People have been buying it, you know. And my gosh, knowing knowing uh, that price, oh my God, Michael. All our prices are very reasonable very, on I mean, purpose. I'm not saying we might raise them at some point <laughs> because right that's now. That's a disclaimer. Well, we have to because we're starting right. we're starting a little lower than we should because we, we I want people to come and understand what we do. Oh, look how beautiful this is. Yeah. Look at those carrots. Come here, Gordon. Yep. Yep, we have uh, pears, roasted carrots, candied pecans, quinoa, spinach, beautiful tamari vinaigrette, radish. It, that's sell, these all sell incredible. They really do. People love them. But, I mean, we can, and this is the thing about what we do here. We empty this case every day. Okay. So because there's nothing more maddening from a perspective as a man like you to come in here and see things that have you know, you have to throw in the trash can because they didn't sell. Well, this right? is the thing. I want people to have confidence. When, like, especially with like our cold sandwiches. When you go into a, uh, a store that sells pre-made sandwiches, or you, you know, you're always looking for you the date. Know. You're always looking for the date. You're always because unless it looks perfect, you don't trust it. Right. I want people to trust what we do. Because of the way the economy has been, and uh, it's hard to do a breakfast lunch scenario in the downtown, let's face it, recently. But this sort of, this sort of uh, scenario works great. I mean, it's almost like a self, not totally self-serve, but it's a stop and go. You're already open because you're baking, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And people can stop by. Uh, I've been reading online, for example. You, you can't get away from Yelp or uh, what people are saying with social media. Your breakfast pizza, everyone loves. You've got the muffins. You've got all those breakfast concepts. Yep. Um, whether you're dieting and want the more, uh, you know, the, the less decadent, all the way up to the gamut, and you've got great coffees. I've heard. Yep. So, with those all with being open for the bakery anyway, I can see where the wheels would be turning. And I like to say, because I'll be, you know, I'm, you're you're seeing B roll now. I never knew there was this nice second floor here, for example. Yeah, yeah. But this is really a great space yeah, the, that we're in right thank now. You. And it's eclectic and comfortable and rustic and a mix of old and new, and but not the bustle of cash registers ringing mm -hmm. or uh, people It's removed from out. retail. Yeah. Right. So you <clears> can yep. come up here and, and hang out. I see uh, we had several people here on their computers and such. So. It's like uh, yeah. The, this is kind of what we didn't a expect. A home away from home. Yeah, when we did it, you know, we, we we saw the vision of the commissary bakery for the restaurants, and and I obviously thought easy enough. You can do retail while you're doing that. If you're going to make 80 loaves of bread, you might as well make 120 and have some out front for the retail. So I mean, there was a lot of that that was just kind of a no-brainer. But what I didn't foresee is just the need for a communal space. Ah, that's. I, I literally get people coming to me on a regular basis and saying, thank you so much for opening this. We really needed this in this town. And I was like, wow. I, you know, and they said there's other places too, but 
um, that this has really become a, a meeting point. And I mean, I'm and looking I see at the it. corner here. I can imagine like a book club meeting. We here. do that. We've already seen that several times. But we have a real range, and this is the great part. If you come up here a little after school, you'll see the two big tables full of teenagers doing their homework and having really? a having a cappuccino and a and a, and a pastry. We were homework. that sophisticated yeah. in high school, weren't we? But then you could come no. up late morning, and I've had older gentlemen up here playing cribbage. I've had people having well, business meetings. We've had uh, women coming in after their kids go off to school and, and gathering on a weekly basis. So it's really become nice a meeting point, and that that's been wonderful to see. I, I didn't I didn't really see that as part of the vision, but I love it. My favorite case. Yeah. Gordon. Well, as you see, we have a lot of we have a lot of uh, European and American style pastries. Um, I hired Mike Ciola, who you might know, to come and uh, head up our pastry department. He's doing a fantastic job. He has a wonderful touch, a great reputation, and he's a, he's an unbelievable pastry chef. So, Mike Ciola is uh, pretty much our head pastry chef here, um, and he's doing a, a great job for us. Um, and we're you know we're uh, we have a great starting point as far as cakes, pies, pastries, cookies. We're, we're working on a few, like I said, a few American items. The next thing we're going to tackle is working out a, uh, a wedding cake uh, per program. Oh, nice. Uh, we've already had people starting to ask us about wedding cake, so we're going to work that out next. And uh, for gluten-free people? We do some. Um, she's, you know, I really, believe it or not, I, I really thought I was going to um, have to develop a much bigger line of gluten-free and we still need to work on some stuff because I get a lot of requests in the restaurants but the, the request level here has not been nearly what I thought it would be. Um, I think you know people expect when they go to a bakery that you know it is what it is. But we're not a gluten-free bakery. We do offer some gluten-free stuff and we're happy to but some of the people that will come in if it, unless it's been made in a gluten-free kitchen they can't have it. So it's still something we're feeling out. I want to expand. I want to come up with a few breads and a few other things. I know a consultant you could hire. Her name's Carolyn Cho. Uh huh. <laughs> People say, how do you do it? How do you, you know, how do you do such a good job at, uh, at all the places? How do, how do you spread yourself like that and do it? I don't. I, I'm not a glory hound. I don't, I'm not the one doing it. I, I, am, I am the leader. I, I am. But I surround myself with great people. How else can you do it? And you, and you get a team. A lot of my staff has been with me for years and years and years. You grab a great team, you build a great team, and you hang on to them. I'm always pushing. What, what can we do next? Hey, um, I'm always <coughs> inspired, and I'm so inspired that I'm going to get up from this table and go find something to eat. Thanks for joining us again. <laughs> my pleasure. Great to see you, Carolyn. Thank you. Do your own taste test at Buckley's Bakery and Cafe in Merrimack while the year is still fresh. Everything there sure is. Ruff, 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 this is Carolyn Cho of the Barking Tomato.